Between episode 9 and 10 of Dino Zeon, we had arguably two of the best episodes, not only of Dino Zeon, but of the Gridman franchise in anime form. Episode 9 being my personally most interesting episode. It's the one that had my eyes glued to the screen. There wasn't anything too explosive about it, but just the idea of Chisei kind of forming her own kaiju that feeds off her emotion, both positive and negative. A very fascinating experience with episode 10 having, I believe it was episode 9's director of Gridman, directing this episode. It felt like a mix and match of so many different ideas, and all I can say is if this man ever gets a directing role that allows him to direct an entire anime, it'll be one of the trippiest things ever, and I look forward to whenever that gets to happen. But I mean... In terms of episode 10, the most, I think, energetic and intriguing episode in that sense where there was a kaiju fight, but it was more about internal demons that you were fighting, getting trapped in the past, and, you know, the idea of ripping yourself away from it because a lot of people, they wish they could go back in the past, and even though it was fake, I mean, it's the ability to change what you think you made a crucial mistake about. So, watching these two episodes back to back was a really interesting experience. It's now the second time it's happened with Dino Zeon, and both times I'm kind of happy not only because I got a bit of a break because I didn't have to review the previous episode, but watching them together creates a very interesting experience, especially because if had I watched episode 9 last week, I would have noticed the difference in directing choice in episode 10, but it wouldn't have been as noticeable because watching episode 9, it has a lot more slow pace feel in terms of the general human movements. I mean, there's plenty of points where the characters are very stiff and, you know, they have awkward pauses, where with episode 10, things are always moving, things get loopy, things get a lot more cartoonish, and there's a wild energy to this episode. And I think had this not been an episode about being trapped in the past, it might have felt off-putting, but given the fact that they're literally trying to escape and kind of relive those tragic memories, it fit perfectly. Now, episode 9 I found to be really incredible because Chisei's definitely been an underdog of this show and one who's definitely been brushed aside more, and she herself felt as such. She really felt like even in this group that are fighting kaiju, she was useless because she's not a pilot, right? Even when she's kind of like attempted to do so, she's not as capable as someone like Yamogi. So for something to be happening all along, I thought she was eventually going to get possessed, to have it form into a kaiju that completely feeds off her emotions. And sometimes it's a really good thing, like in the case of saving Yume when she was about to fall to her death. In other cases, when she's like, oh, that's the school I hate, it's about to absolutely destroy it. I think it's very interesting because back when Yamogi was conflicted, I think it was episode 8 or episode 7, one of the two, he was conflicted about killing that kaiju because the kaiju seemingly had feelings. And can you connect to those kaiju? Can you do this or that? And seemingly, the progression of this cast was saying, absolutely not, we kill Kaiju. But because of Chisei's involvement, and the fact that they not only value this Kaiju as being like, okay, maybe some Kaiju can be saved, and maybe some Kaiju are perfectly normal, they really are just a creature, and like with anything, it can be used for dangerous things, or it can be used to help those in need. It was interesting to see how she not only got, like, officially recruited into the cast, it felt like her progression into further self-harm, which... I've been saying for a while is why she's covering up that one arm even when she sleeps. I think it's definitely a way to get over that and to have the mixture of someone like Yume who very much felt like she was progressing towards a suicide angle. It was a very interesting idea of like having the sister's storyline almost feel like she was about to commit the same atrocity seemingly because her sister everyone thought committed suicide up until this episode, episode 10 which confirms it was without a doubt an accident. To see the idea of, like, the different paths, I mean, the only one who really got glossed over the most would have to be our boy Knight, but given the fact that he had such a dominating factor in Gridman, it was perfectly fine, nice little fan service. But to have characters like our boy literally, you know, decide to not run away, what would happen if you kept the money? He's living this luxury life, and I love it when he gets shattered, and he's like, what about the money? And she laughs and says, it's probably fake. He's been beating himself up for so long, wondering, like, what would have happened if I would have went with her instead of running away? Literally nothing would have changed. The money would have changed your life. It's what you do day in and day out. Or, without a doubt, my favorite, Yume being able to talk with her sister, really feeling like he was building up to suicide. No, the reason she was there was simply, like, she practiced because she was embarrassed to sing at home. So her inviting her sister was her 
kind of like giving an open arm saying like I'm trying to connect more with you but she is embarrassed and she feels like she needs to push back so it was an accident while she was thinking and the viewers were probably thinking at least I know I was that it was suicide due to bullying but it was a completely different playing field how do you rip yourself away from that situation where you get to finally connect with your sister and when she finally breaks away from that puzzle she's been working with, that's when the plot line stops. That's when she gets to go back. And I think it's a great symbolic scene to really showcase all that. With honestly the action, in episode 9 it wasn't anything too too crazy, but seeing the combination of Knight, literally Dino Zeon here, we have a Kaiju, it created this badass form with this, honestly it felt like an old school tokusatsu style soundtrack as they annihilate the Kaiju in episode 9. In episode 10, it's literally just a buzzsaw. This thing is literally erasing and like doing this weird glitch effect. And this circular saw takes it out in one foul swoop and it was completely badass. With arguably yet again another really interesting soundtrack playing. The thing I really enjoyed though about this week's fight is how it was more on the mental side. So even though it was technically a quick fight, it almost immediately quickly defeated them. Trapped them in the past. So when they did get out, it was almost like they took the fight as quickly back to it. And it was really fun to see that, especially considering that we're now, I think we have two episodes left of Dinozeon, and without a doubt it feels like we're building up to a third anime. And I'm not sure how long this is planned to go on, if you know anything about Gridman and Tokusatsu series, they generally last a long time. But it almost feels to me, and this is just honestly a gut reaction, that the Gridman universe in anime form, at least this Gridman universe is set to be three series. The first being Gridman, the second being Dinozeon, and the third being wherever they're going to conclude the story. The reason I feel that way is that when watching episode 9 I was questioning, okay, if they are going to do a third series, clearly this cast of characters will be in the third series. They will still be the main central cast. After episode 10 I'm not so sure because they do touch upon the fact that there isn't enough kaiju for these enthusiasts to continue to control. So it almost feels like with the last couple of episodes, we will wrap up their story. And I feel like with the pacing, they absolutely could seeing where the different characters have ended up. So if they do do a third series, while I do think they'll touch back upon Dino Zeon, similar to how they touch back upon Gridman with Knight and things like that, it's going to be interesting to see what the conclusion will be. And I think that will be a very interesting bow to tie this all up because Gridman served as an open and closed story. Dino Zeon, at first I was a little concerned, could they do it? After this week's episode, seeing how far all the characters have come, I definitely feel like they can put another bow, and should something happen and we don't get a third anime, it probably will still stand by itself on its own two legs. But it does feel to me like we're building up to a trilogy, and maybe even more depending on where they want to go, but for now it feels like a trilogy is definitely what's been planned, and in th two to three years we'll see whatever the next installment in the SSSS series will be. The past two episodes, Two very different directing and I think storyboard styles, but two equally memorable in their own unique way. For my mind just being glued to Chisei's character in episode 9, just seeing what she was going to do with this kaiju, turning out to not just be that generic I'm the evil villain threat, rather it was actually a way to bring her out of her shell and feel connected to these friends that she's grown to know and love, to then the emotional struggle being trapped in the past and a very unique style battle in episode 10. Dino Zeon's incredibly underrated and underappreciated and that's why I constantly say it's absolutely deserving of all the praise and I'd argue deserves praise that a lot of these mainstream shows end up getting but this one for whatever reason just isn't sticking its landing for a lot of western viewers so definitely promote it if you do enjoy it for sure but let me know your thoughts and feelings on either last week's episode or this week's down below. If you enjoyed the video leave like share your support and hit that subscribe button if you happy new round here. So until next time everyone please take care and have a good one.